Hi, welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome back if you're a subscriber. So I'm really excited for this video because as you all know, I am a huge horror movie fanatic. I basically only watch horror movies. I get made fun of by my family because I pretty much only like horror movies. Horror movies and reality TV. But anyway, this video is going to be recommending books based on some horror movies that I personally really love. And I've already done a video like this before that I'll link above that I would recommend checking out that has some really good recommendations in it too. But today I have a new list of movies and I can't wait to dive into it. I have a stack of books next to me and let's just jump right in. So the first movie pick is The Craft and this came out in 1996. So it has those awesome 90s vibes, which I love so much. A newcomer to a Catholic prep high school falls in with a trio of outcast teen girls who practice witchcraft and they all soon conjure up various spells and curses against those who anger them. This one is so much fun. I love all the actors in this. I love the 90s vibes. I love the 90s fashion. I love how it's witchy and about friendship and about how far people will go to try to get what they want, how to become beautiful, how to become smart, how to get the boy they like. All of these things it explores in this movie and it has a lot of humor. It's so much fun. I would highly recommend checking out this movie if you haven't watched it before. I really need to rewatch it soon. But if you like this movie, I would recommend My Dearest Darkest by Kayla Cottingham. This book I talk about so much on my channel. I feel like I never shut up about this book because I love it so much. And this one is about a group of girls in this all girls school and they meet this creature underneath their school. And this creature promises to grant them whatever they want in life in exchange for body parts. And so this has a very similar concept where they're making this deal in the movie, it's using witchcraft and this it's using this monster and they're trying to get what they want and everything seems great at first. Of course, they're getting all their dreams come true, but things turn sinister. This also has a sapphic romance in it, which is super cute. I love the romance in this book. And this is a YA book, but I felt like it had some pretty gory scenes in it, which was a pleasant surprise. So I highly recommend checking this one out. I love dark academic settings. The setting and atmosphere was perfection in this one as well. And in the craft, you're following high schoolers. So it has that setting too. All right, so this is funny because I've actually never watched the original Saw. I can't believe I've never watched Saw. I really need to. The reason I haven't is because the ending twist was spoiled for me. So I'm disappointed in that because I know what's gonna happen at the end. I still feel like even though I know it's gonna happen at the end, I'll probably still enjoy it, but that's why I haven't watched it yet. Saw says two strangers awaken in a room with no recollection of how they got there and soon discover their pawns in a deadly game perpetuated by a notorious serial killer. So I have a perfect pick for this one and I am so excited about it because I just discovered it and I binge read all four of these books. I'm gonna recommend the first book, but once you read the first book, you're gonna wanna continue on in the series most likely, but it's called the Deadly Reality TV series and they're by C. Commissar. And this one is an extreme horror series. I'm not super into extreme horror, but if this is considered extreme horror, then maybe I am, I don't know. <laughs> maybe this was my introduction to extreme horror. I just don't like books that are really gross. I can handle extreme scenes, but if the goal is to gross me out, then I'm not as drawn to it. But anyway, that's a tangent. This is about a reality TV show where contestants sign up and they basically inflict pain on themselves through challenges in order to win money. So it's about the producer of the show. So you get to see scenes from the show, but also you get to learn about this character and what he does on the side. So heavy content warnings, of course, for this one, I would definitely look it up. But if you love Saw, I think you'll really love this. And it had me hooked. I couldn't stop reading it. I learned that there's more to this series. There's like a two more books after the original four. So I'm definitely gonna jump in and listen to those. I would recommend listening to these on audiobook because there is like this TV announcer who does a really good job making you feel like you're watching a reality TV show. And this series just really makes you think, what will people do for money and how far people will go. 
So I really love this series and I can't wait to keep reading and I want to check out some other things by this author. <laughs> some of the other titles by this author are very out there. <laughs> the content in those I feel like I, will be more gross for me so I may not check out those but there's some other ones that look similar to this that I'm definitely going to check out. The next movie I'm going to touch on is one of my favorite movies of all time and that is Scream, another 90s classic and just horror movie classic. A year after the murder of her mother, a teenage girl is terrorized by a new killer who targets the girl and her friends by using horror films as part of a deadly game. So what I would recommend for a book that has major Scream vibes is The Mary Shelley Club and this is by Goldie Madolsky and this one is so much fun. I feel like it's very underrated and oftentimes I get annoyed by YA books but this is a YA book done perfectly. The vibes are all Scream. Literally I was imagining the main character as Sydney Prescott. I basically read this as a Sydney Prescott book but this one is so much fun. It's about these high schoolers who have this club and they basically do these fear tests on their classmates. So they try to do these elaborate pranks and they're horror movie style inspired and their goal is to elicit real fear from their classmates and it's this exclusive club but the new girl in the school actually is able to join. But people in the club start being targeted by a real killer. So that's all you need to know going into this book. I highly recommend it. I read it very very fast. It's extremely fast paced and I would really recommend this for fans of Scream. Also in the comments let me know if you've seen the new Scream movie. I actually watched it last week and I enjoyed it. It's not as good as the original Scream movies in my opinion but I had a really good time with it and I just love Scream. I love the franchise so if I'm getting a new Scream movie I'm more likely than not going to just enjoy it because I like being in the Scream universe. The next horror movie is The Witch and I love this movie so much. This one is about a family in the 1630s in New England and they're torn apart by the forces of witchcraft, black magic, and possession. So the whole movie is filmed in a way that's like a period piece so they speak in old English which can be kind of hard for some people to get into. I personally loved it. I loved the atmosphere. I thought it was very haunting and it was a very slow burn but once everything pays off it really really pays off. It's very creepy, very very atmospheric. And the book I want to recommend if you love that horror movie is Slewfoot by Brahm. They have very very similar vibes. This one is about a young woman living in a puritanical society and her husband actually passes away and he dies under very mysterious circumstances and when he dies she is trying to fight for her freedom and her farm that she owns but a powerful spirit named Slewfoot is awakened and villagers start to die and they start to suspect that Abatha is a witch. This one is so good. I loved it so much. The atmosphere is amazing. It's a folk horror and I love Abatha. I love this book so much. I would highly recommend it for you. The next movie is Promising Young Woman and this isn't actually technically a horror movie but it definitely has some horror elements in it. A young woman traumatized by a tragic event in her past seeks out vengeance against those who crossed her path. And immediately I knew that this has similar vibes to They Never Learn. Not quite the same. I would say that Promising Young Woman is a lot more sad than They Never Learn. They Never Learn is not sad in my opinion. It's just fun. But they definitely have similar vibes. So this book is one of my favorite books of all time. It's by Lane Fargo and I always talk about it. It has a dark academic setting and it's about a professor. She is a serial killer and she picks off the men every year at her campus who are horrible. And it's following this professor and it's also following a student at the same university who's navigating through her freshman year of college. That's all you need to know for this. It's so much fun. I rarely hear anybody disappointed by this. I have heard some people disappointed but for the most part everyone gives this five stars. It's such a fun ride and I highly recommend it. It also has a plot twist in the middle that I didn't predict. I screamed when I heard it. I thought it was so fun, so clever and it's not like it's never been done before but the way it hit in this book just hit me different and I loved it. If you love Stranger Things, I think you would enjoy Burn Down, Rise Up by Vincent Toredo. So the synopsis of the first series of Stranger Things is when a young boy disappears, his mother, a police chief, and his friends must confront terrifying supernatural forces in order to get him back. 
This book has a lot of Stranger Things imagery and elements in it. If you've seen Stranger Things, you know what the Upside Down is, and this book has something sort of similar to the Upside Down, and it also just has some imagery that reminds me of Demogorgons and stuff like that in it, but this is a YA book, and it's about these sudden disappearances that are happening in the Bronx, and the main character's cousin disappears, so she wants to go find her cousin, and also her mom falls ill with this mysterious illness. So soon the friends realize that everything is connected to this urban legend called the Echo Game, and this game is rumored to trap people in this sinister underground world under the city. So basically these characters have to play the game in order to save everyone that they love. So this one has Stranger Things vibes, like I said. I wanted it to have a little bit more vibes in it. I felt like it was more towards the end that it really lived up to the Stranger Things comparison, but I definitely would recommend this to people who want a story sort of similar to Stranger Things. There's friendship in here, there's a sapphic romance, and also it has some really interesting history about the Bronx that I didn't know anything about that was interesting to read about. I know that doesn't have to do with Stranger Things, but it's something that I enjoyed in this book. So if you like the horror movie Orphan, I would recommend The Perfect Child by Lucinda Berry. These have similar vibes because of the child being very difficult. I know Orphan is an older horror movie, but I recently watched it because of the second one coming out and I really loved it and I hadn't had the twist spoiled at the end for me. So if you're looking for a really good horror movie with an awesome twist, I would recommend checking out Orphan. I also even enjoyed the second Orphan. I didn't like it quite as much, but I found it surprising and I liked the direction it took. So Orphan is about a husband and wife who recently lost their baby and they adopt a nine-year-old girl who is not nearly as innocent as she appears. And so The Perfect Child is about a couple, similarly, and they have a wonderful life. The husband's a doctor and the wife is a nurse and they both work at the same hospital. But the big thing that's missing from their life is a child and they've really, really wanted a child. And so one day this abandoned little girl shows up and the husband has to perform surgery on her and he begins to become really attached to the little girl and he he convinces his wife to let them adopt her and so she comes home and the child just is not bonding with the mother and basically this kid starts acting out in increasingly more disturbing ways and there is a scene in this there is a scene oh my gosh new fear unlocked <laughs> it is so disturbing there are many many disturbing scenes in this and it deals with you know, a child who's really traumatized, how they're acting out. There's a big mystery in this one that I don't really want to give away. I will say my main problem with this book is how it ends. It feels like it ends literally mid-sentence, but if that doesn't bother you, I would recommend checking this one out if you like the concept of a really disturbing, scary child. So the next one is a TV show and it's Servant, and this one is on Apple TV, and they're almost done with the fourth season, and it's the final season, and I'm really sad because I really, really enjoyed this series so much. I feel like people don't talk about it very much because it is on Apple TV and I feel like not a lot of people have Apple TV. So I would highly recommend getting Apple TV for like a month or two just to watch this series. I don't watch anything else so I just cancel my membership when the episodes aren't coming out. But this says a Philadelphia couple is in mourning after an unspeakable tragedy creates a rift in their marriage and opens the door for a mysterious force to enter their home. So this one, like it says, and they hire this nanny and soon you realize that their child isn't really as it seems. And this is like a tiny little spoiler for Servant. It actually happens in the first episode, but I'm gonna put spoiler up on the screen just in case you don't wanna know what it is. But basically in the first episode, there's this nanny, they hire her and the nanny comes and she sees that their child is actually a baby doll. It's not a real baby, but they're all acting like this baby doll is real. So it's very odd. And the book I want to recommend for this is Just Like Mother by Anne Heltzel. This one is about the main character. She was in a cult when she was little and she was in this with her cousin and she thankfully escaped but hasn't seen her cousin since the night she fled. But now her cousin reappears in her life and she starts building a relationship with her. She gets sucked in into her world. Her cousin is really wealthy because she owns this fertility business and she actually makes these really lifelike dolls. So as you can see with the cover, creepy dolls. And she ends up going to live with her cousin in her remote estate and there are very weird vibes. And I feel like the vibes in this are very similar to Servant because there's something very off with this husband and wife 
and you get that in Servant. And also, like I said, in the light spoiler section, you know, there's that element as well, which I don't want to say in case people fast forward to this part. I will say with this book, if you're annoyed by a character who should be seeing warning signs, this one may annoy you a little bit, but I was okay with that. I just wanted to see how it was going to play out. And it kind of makes sense if you delve into why she might be ignoring or not noticing the warning signs, but I would recommend this for similar vibes. The next movie that is one of my favorites of all time is The Descent. And this one came out in the 2000s, came out to be exact in 2006. And I discovered this one when I was in college. My first semester I had Thanksgiving and I ended up staying in the dorm when most people went home. And I wanted a really scary movie to watch and I chose The Descent and I immediately fell in love with this movie. It is so action packed. It has such a claustrophobic setting. The stakes are so high. I would really highly recommend checking out this one to everybody who loves adventure horror. And the description says, a caving expedition goes horribly wrong as the explorers become trapped and ultimately pursued by a strange breed of predators. So this one, the recommendation I'm going to give you is one I actually didn't love a ton, but if you want the Descent vibes, I would recommend checking it out. This one is a YA thriller, so The Descent is a very adult horror movie, but this one feels very YA, but it's the closest thing I could find to The Descent. And the book I'm talking about is Into the Sublime by Kate A. Moore. So this is about four teenage girls who are all thrill seekers, and they decide to go into this cave, and they go down because they're trying to discover this lake in the cave, and it's this urban legend that they've heard, and they all go in, but only three of them return. So my problems with this book were it didn't keep my attention the whole time and it was very very YA but if you're simply just looking for that underground cave expedition atmosphere I would definitely recommend this one. So my next two recommendations are based on home invasion horror movies. So the first is The Strangers which I feel like is a pretty iconic home invasion movie. I feel like that's the first movie that people think of. It's a classic but also Hush which is extremely good too. That one is on Netflix and I really like both of these for different reasons. The Strangers is definitely darker and sadder whereas Hush of course it is dark but it's more hopeful <laughs> let's just say that than The Strangers. So The Strangers is about a young couple staying in an isolated vacation home and they are terrorized by three known assailants. And then Hush is about a deaf and mute writer who retreated into the woods to live a solitary life and she must fight for her life in silence when a masked killer appears at her window. So if you like that kind of vibe, home invasion horror, which personally is some of the scariest horror to me because it feels so realistic, I would recommend Stolen Tongues by Felix Blackwell and especially the beginning of this really feels like a home invasion movie. This is about a couple. They take this trip to this isolated cabin for a romantic vacation and soon it feels like something is on the outside trying to get into the house. Even though this isn't quite like a home invasion in the same way that those other movies are, I would still recommend it for people who are really scared about hearing sounds outside of the house, feeling hunted within a house, and it has some really, really scary scenes. So a recent movie I watched was The Menu and I loved it. I thought it was so much fun. A young couple travels to a remote island to eat at an exclusive restaurant where the chef has prepared a lavish menu with some shocking surprises. So if you like the vibes of this one, I would recommend The Venue by TJ Payne. This one is about a group of guests and they're invited to this luxurious castle for this wedding, but something feels very off when they get there and eventually they are forced to either kill or be killed if they wanna make it out alive. I think this one would be really fun if you liked the trapped feeling in the menu and if you liked the feel of someone being in control of the situation. In this one, the wedding couple is controlling the situation and forcing people to do things they don't wanna do. And in the movie, it's the chef who's trapping people on the island. So they're both isolated settings and deal with these sort of parties that go wrong. So I think these are pretty similar to each other. Next I'm going to talk about The Bates Motel and this is a TV series which is a prequel to Psycho. This series was so good. I wish it was still going on. I need to go back and rewatch it because it was so well done. 
It says, a contemporary prequel to Psycho, giving a portrayal of how Norman Bates' psyche unravels through his teenage years and how deeply intricate his relationship with his mother, Norma, truly is. So if you like this show, I would recommend Blood on the Tracks. And this is a manga series by Shuzo Oshimi, and it is fantastic. It is very fast paced. I flew through the volumes. There's still at least one more volume coming out, and then I think it's going to shift focus, but this is so good. So I would recommend this one because there is a very messed up mother-son relationship in it, similar to the Bates Motel. As I was reading the manga series, I kept thinking about how Norman interacts with his mother and that whole complicated relationship and how it's a back and forth between him almost hating his mother but also being obsessed with his mother and it's very odd. I would highly recommend this manga series. It's very short. You can pretty much read the volumes in like 10 to 15 minutes and so you fly through them and I just couldn't look away. The way this mother treats her son is just so messed up and their whole relationship is so weird and I would highly recommend it for lovers of psychological horror. All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you enjoyed this video and if you want more. I have some more ideas for future ones in the series, so I'm planning on making more of these videos, but I love comparing horror books to horror movies and vice versa. I think it's so fun. I love finding similarities in them, and I love searching for a horror book that matches the vibes of my favorite horror movies. If you've made it this far, leave a movie emoji, whether it's like that film reel or a video camera, whatever you'd like. And I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.